Hey YouTube, Boxer Tech here. I want to take you guys through this video today, which is uh, changing out the driver's side valve cover gasket on a 1989 Subaru Legacy Outback. So long story short, I bought this car about three months ago for uh, about $1,000 and it had a blown head gasket. Pulled the motor out of it, rebuilt the motor, and uh, put it back in. I ended up ordering a gasket, full gasket kit for the engine uh, during reassembly and it didn't come with the correct valve cover gaskets. So I ended up fighting with Rock Auto for uh, about two or three days going back and forth emailing them and they finally sent me the correct gaskets for this car uh, for this motor because the gasket design is actually different from the earlier EJ25s. So this is a dual overhead cam EJ25 um, and I'm going to show you how to do it without having to lift the motor up or disconnect any of the, the motor mounts, exhaust, anything like that. Um, this job will take probably about an hour and um, there's only a couple things that you have to remove from the top of the engine. Uh, the battery and your windshield washer reservoir. That's it. Everything else uh, we're going to leave in the car. Um, we do have to take off a few things on the side of the engine um, to get the valve cover off, um, but I'll go through those as they come up. So right now I'm just going to take off the battery and the uh, reservoir and show you guys the next step after that. So a few things to prep for this job. I need a 10 millimeter socket. I need a ratchet, um, preferably one that has a uh, bendable head. I'm going to need a small extension and I'm going to need a wrench and for this one I'm actually using one that has a ratcheting handle on the end of it. Uh, this is going to make easy work of the back bolts and you won't be sitting there swearing at the engine uh, while you're trying to get one of the back bolts out of the valve cover. So after you get the battery and the windshield washer reservoir moved out of the way, down on the valve covers there is three bolts. I've already taken them off. Um, but there's a bolt here. There's a center bolt right under here. And then a front bolt right here that you have to take off. You want to remove this hose right here. It's just a little clamp that you can press with your fingers and move it out of the way and then pull up on it. And then we have to go on the bottom and get the three bolts down there. So what I'm going to use for the back bolt, since it's not uh, easy to get to with a, rat with a ratchet, is I'm going to use a ratcheting wrench. And I'm going to put it on that bolt down there to get that back bolt off of there. So the bolt I'm talking about is right there. It's right up against the cross frame. So I'm going to go underneath and we're going to remove the two bolts off the bottom and then come back up and get the third one up top. All right, so we're back underneath the car here, and these are the two bolts that we're going to take off with our ratchet right on the bottom here. I'm going to remove these two with the ratchet, and then I'm going to go back and get the other one with the ratcheting wrench. All right, so I got the two bolts out here. As you can see, there's a little bit of oil drippage, so um, just make sure that you have something to catch the oil that drips on the ground. Um, we're going to go back in and clean up it later. Um, I have a blue tarp on underneath the car to help catch it. It's a tarp I don't care about, got it for free from Harbor Freight, so we're going to go and remove that back bolt now. Alright, as you can see I got the last bolt out. Last thing we have to do now is just give a valve cover just a slight tug and we should be able to detach it right from uh, the head. So we're going to remove the valve cover right now, see what the gasket looks like. So one thing I forgot to mention here, in taking this off, there's two 10 millimeter bolts for the oil filler neck. You want to take these out and pull the oil filler neck out um, because you're not going to be able to get it around the AC line here. So I took that out and we're going to just set that off to the side. And then once we get that off, now you can see uh, there's the gasket right there and the cam cover. I'm just gonna work it out of there. 
So as soon as I get it out, I will be back and show you guys. All right, so the cam cover is out. And uh, you can see this is the bare um, face of the, um, the block here, the head. And these seals, these tubes here, sometimes the seals, the original seals, will actually get stuck on there. Make sure that you take those off if they don't come off with a valve cover. Um, and then over here, um, there's a couple beads of this um, packing fluid here. We're going to take that out. We're actually going to replace that when we go through and put the cam cover seal back on, or the valve cover seal. So taking a look with the valve covers, uh, this is a, again, a 99 Subaru Legacy Outback with the 2.5. There is apparently a couple different valve cover designs um, on the later generations of these. Um, you want to make sure that you get the Felpro VS50672R. Um, this kit comes with um, all the gaskets that you need, the right, the left, and then the small gaskets, as well as the 12 valve cover grommets as well. So when I rebuilt the motor on this car, I ordered the kit for everything, for all the gaskets. And the gasket that came with it was, uh, it was close, but it wasn't 100%. So what I actually had to do was, um, this gasket actually had no tabs right here um, on the side of the valve cover gasket, and I had to actually make try to make my own with packing fluid and RTV. You can see right there and right there. Um, they were completely missing tabs, but right there, the tabs are there. So this valve cover developed a leak actually right in the front of the valve cover where the RTV is that I used for the tabs. So I'm gonna pull out the other gasket, the right gasket, and show you guys the difference. So here we actually see the difference between them. I've got them almost side by side here. And you can see that no tabs and tabs that match my valve covers. On the back here, no tabs. And the blue one, the new one, there's the new gaskets for it. So hopefully this will help the gasket seal better and stop it from leaking a uh, little weeping of uh, oil from the valve cover. So we got the new gaskets in now. You can see that they fit so much better on this side here and the tabs are in the correct places. So I'm just going to follow the reverse order that we did to take it off. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of packing fluid um, on the corners here of where the cam seals are. Before I put it in there, I'm going to let it tack up for probably about 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, I've already replaced the spark plug tube seals. The tube seals that actually they sent me with the kit were actually square. And these ones are more oval rounded for this valve cover design, which is what makes this valve cover design so unique on this uh, 99 model here. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to put some packing fluid on the corner of the valve cover seals, or uh, the uh, cam seal, here, 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 and in this corner. And then we're going to put the valve cover back on the car. Now the other reason I knew that the valve covers had been leaking for a little bit, this is the bottom of the valve cover right here. When I removed the old gasket, there was actually quite a bit of oil down in that valley right there, and down inside where this cam seal um, arches here. So I know that it had been coming from this part of the valve cover here because it was leaking, there was oil all the way down here. Now this valve cover uh, was completely oilless when I put the engine back together. There was no oil in the car when I put it back together. So the I knew that uh, everything up top here was nice and clean inside this journal here. So it was all clean on the side here and all clean here. It was just on this one side, it was all the way down inside this journal here and all the way down the back because it was leaking out the back of the valve cover right here, right where this bolt hole is. So the other thing I'm going to do too is I'm going to use the seals that Felpro sent with the kit for the, uh, for the bolts. This bolt, the, this kit, the kit that I bought came with bolts, but I figure I'm going to use these anyways uh, just to make sure that it's all uniform and out of the same kit. So this is the sealant that I'm going to be using for 
uh, the corners of the valve cover here. Um, the factory service manual actually says to use 3-bond. 3-bond uh, is uh, kind of hard to find um, and it says or equivalent and I looked up on Subaru and uh, Permatex Ultra Black um, is one of the ones that uh, they actually recommend. So the one I'm using is Permatex 24105. And I'm going to put some gasket material here in the corner. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put it here. A nice even bead is what I put on there. And I'm going to put it here. So that's what it calls for. We're going to put it on the corners of each of the cam seal valleys here. Um, just so that it gives it a little better extra seal valve cover back in there just put the three top bolts here in so they're snug uh, don't put them in so they're tight tighten this one just a little bit tighter than the rest because this is where the packing fluid actually meets with the uh, the seals over here so we want to make sure that we have a good seal on there and then we're going to go on the bottom uh, and do the same thing with the three on the bottom once we have all six of them completely snug on there we're going to go ahead and torque them down so now we got five of the six bolts on. The last one that we're going to put in is the lower bottom one that's right above the subframe. So I want to take a minute to tell you guys about these bolts. Now these bolts, you can see that they have a fat part on the upper part right after the threads. So basically what these are meant to do is, as you put them in, this will actually seat up right against the the head. Once it seats up against the head and it's tight, you don't have to crank it anymore. If you do, you're going to end up stripping the threads out on this and you'll or you'll end up stripping the threads out inside the head, and you definitely don't want that. So, all you have to do, you don't really have to torque these down. The service manual actually says to torque these down, but you really just have to do them all the way up to there until they're tight probably give it about an eighth of a turn after that just to make sure for good measures. So I'm going to put this last bolt in, put everything back together. Alright, so after you get the valve cover bolts all tightened up, uh, you put back on your oil filler neck, you put back on your tube here, and you put, down, put back on your spark plug wires. The only thing to do after that is to put your reservoir back on and your battery. So that concludes this video with the driver's side or left valve cover on my 1999 Subaru Legacy Outback with the 2.5. If you guys found this helpful, make sure you like and subscribe in the videos. Um, I'll be posting more regular videos um, as well as how to do the passenger side valve cover, which is a little trickier than this one.